I'm present. Present. We have a quorum. We have three bills in front of us today, um, all dealing with green energy, I believe. And we will take Senate Bill 2174 first by Senator Lynch. Senator Prada Lynch, sorry, Aaron. Two one seven four would establish an office of regulatory reform task force to make recommendations for statewide solar permitting permitting process for small residential and commercial rooftop solar projects. The floor is all yours. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Senator Chacon, you okay? You need some water? Okay. No, just be, I'm worried about you. Um, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And your explanation of the bill pretty much um, said it all. I think uh, this is an, or I know that this is an attempt um, to try and continue on with our uh, cutting the red tape and, and allowing um, businesses to have uh, more of a streamlined um, regulatory reform. Uh, and we're trying to take that into um, the green sector, uh, frankly. So I know um, there are other others, and I'm not sure. Um, if anybody from any of the agencies are here to testify, but that will have a lot more kind of intricate knowledge about this bill than I do, but um, you kind of said it all. Do we have any questions for the Senator? No? Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We do have some people who signed up for it. Chris Kearns from the Office of Energy Resource in favor of. Chris, for our TV audience, you have to hit the... Oh, it's on green. You're good. Great. I won't touch it then. Uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, uh, the Office of Energy Resources fully supports this bill. Um, this is an issue that we've been hoping to get examined over the last couple of years. Um, so we're excited to be a part of the task force to fundamentally address the issue of streamlining the permitting process. Uh, whether you're doing a small solar installation on a rooftop in Westerly or a small rooftop installation in Woonsocket, there's fundamentally really no difference with the installation but there is a wide degree of differences with the permittings across the state, and that requires a solar company or a wind company to hire somebody to review each town's permitting process that you know, adds to the soft costs of renew uh, renewable energy installations. This type of legislative effort would lead the way to reducing certain soft costs, including permitting, um, and we look forward to working with the task force and producing legislative recommendations for this committee and the General Assembly uh, next session. Senator Jabor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Don't forget to hit your microphone, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members. Is this particular legislation at the request of your office? Uh, no. This legislation, I believe, is a part of the Senate's green economy legislative package that was uh, uh, referenced within the report from a few weeks ago. Okay. Thank you. Further questions for Chris? So basically the, the same issues, Chris, that we've heard in our committee dealing with other permitting throughout the municipalities, having a variety of different statutes or regulations that people have to deal with. Mm -hmm. You're trying to streamline it across the state? That would be the fundamental goal, yes, Chairman. Any other questions, Chris? Thank you very much. Thank you. Susan Adabaugh. The Northeast Clean Energy Council. Hi, thank you, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, my name is Sue Anderbois. I'm the Rhode Island coordinator for the Northeast Clean Energy Council. Um, NECC is a uh, membership-based organization representing clean energy businesses, running the gambit from small solar to wind to anything that's clean, um, who do business or are based in the Northeast. Um, we have a couple hundred members, um, many of which operate in Rhode Island, and many more are interested in doing so. Um, and we're just here to support Senate Bill 2174. We really appreciate and our members appreciate the efforts to harmonize um, small-scale solar permitting and fees across the state um, through this task force. Um, currently, each of the state's 39 cities and towns can and do set their own permitting fees and schedules. Um, this type of patchwork of policies can make clean energy um, more favorable in some towns and less favorable in other towns and in general just adds to, as Chris already mentioned, the soft costs of doing business in Rhode Island. Um, so harmonizing the permitting process and fees across the state can help reduce costs for customers and really increase clean energy here in Rhode Island. Um, we support the bill and I'm available if you have any questions and our, our members and I are available throughout the process if we can be helpful in any way. Any questions for Sue? Is there a big market for this, Sue? 
I think so. So it is pretty confusing for our, our members to be doing business across the different towns. Some of the um, permitting fees and schedules aren't even on like a website, so it's a lot of calling, requesting faxes. People could be on roofs installing solar and instead they're driving their truck you know, to a permitting office and asking for the fees and schedules, they're asking for different paperwork. Um, and so it is taking t away time and adding cost to projects that could just be like really streamlined and simple, you know, as Chris already mentioned. Doing a rooftop project in Westerly is no different than doing a small rooftop project in Woonsocket or Providence. And so adding all these additional barriers, you know, you could just be reducing the cost for homeowners. Yeah, the reason for my question, I, I know there's a couple of my neighbors who have done this, and there's a local business in um, Senator Cody and myself hometown that has, uh, has done this. So I just find this very interesting. Yeah. So any other questions, Senator Lombardo? Thank you very much. Uh, this is no different than a plumbing contractor pulling a pump plumbing permit in 38, 39 cities or towns. Uh, the permit process is not that difficult. Uh, a phone call to find out the fee schedule. I'm all in support of this, by the way, because I'm a mechanical contractor, and mm -hmm. it's one of my complaints that we should be able to streamline this. But to take the solar industry and put them above every other industry is a problem that I have. I think it should be done for all, all permitting process throughout the uh, state of Rhode Island, not just the solar industry. No, and I think that's a valid point, so reducing regulatory burden on other, others as well. Um, I think for solar, um, they already they fill out a building. They filled out, it's like building permitting, electrical permitting, and it's different across the, the towns, and some of them require a building permit. Some of them don't, even though they all should. <laughs> um, and so I think as an industry that's still growing and taking off, um, a lot of the cities and towns haven't really had to deal with solar in the way that they have with some of the other industries, and so just creating some sort of streamlined process um, would be helpful and could be instructive. But I totally hear your concern that there are other trades as well. Senator Gallo. I would concur with uh, Senator Lombardo that uh, we are in need of streamlining the process and that perhaps we should widen the scope so that all um, permitting could be encompassed in the same bill rather than just this one. Well, that's something that we can have staff look at. Yeah, Absolutely. I would strongly support that. Any other questions? Thank you very much. Great, thank you. So this concludes the hearing on 2174, a motion by Senator Cody to hold for further study, second by Senator DeBoer. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. The next bill we're going to take up is uh, Senate Bill 2175 by Senator Archambault. And with this bill, we'd have the Office of Regulatory Reform in consultation with various state departments and plant-based and agricultural industry representatives work to facilitate economic growth within plant-based industries in agriculture. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Essentially, this is a bill based in agriculture and green-related industries. What it would do is it would take the DEM, Department of Labor and Training, Coastal Resource Management Council, and representatives from other plant-based industries in agriculture and work to identify burdensome regulations. We had this under Governor Chafee, as you may recall, where they had that uh, person appointed to go through his regulations. It was onerous and streamlined the regulations. I like the spirit of this bill because anything that can deregulate and make it easier for businesses to operate within these uh, related industries, I think, is a good thing for our economy. Uh, Plant-based industries, as you know, or as we call them, are, are green-related industries, agriculture, plant-based. Some statistics. There was a URI study, a URI study that estimated that our green-related sectors contributed significantly to Rhode Island's economy. In fact, over 5 percent of growth in green-related industries would add 94.5 million to our budget and 380 to our economy, excuse me, and uh, 387 jobs. We could use another 100 million dollars from plant-related industries. Uh, agriculture and plant-based industries aren't just noteworthy. They also preserve our resources, our natural resources, and land preservation. I'm all about getting as much land preservation as we possibly can. And so it's basically something that dovetails into climate, uh, global and climate development strategies to, uh, to help to strengthen uh, preservation and uh, deregulation. And I think it's a good bill, and I'd ask for your support. Answer any questions you may have. Do we have any questions for Senator Archibald? 
Senator, just to let you know, again, in Senator Cody's my hometown, there is actually a, somebody who's looking to do something to, to this extent. So, uh, that's that's culture great to hear. in the great city of Winslaka. Uh, yeah, lots going on in Winslaka, yes. Um, we don't have anybody else who's signed up for this bill. Um, we'd like to review a little bit more. So I have a motion by Senator Jabbar to hold for further study, seconded by Senator Chacon. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And the last one we have is a resolution um, requesting the Commerce Corporation work jointly with Environment and Labor by Senator Pearson. Senator Pearson, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, this resolution is really about our seafood and agriculture industry, and I think oftentimes uh, we take for granted in Rhode Island uh, how lucky we are to have such a good industry. I was recently uh, on a ski trip, not with Senator Lombardo, uh, but a little bit closer to home in Quebec. But I was in Quebec, and on the menu was an appetizer point, Judith Calamari. Uh, so I think our, you know, I think we often forget how far the reach is of our industry. Uh, and some quick stats for you, for everyone: uh, commercial fishermen uh, landed a approximately 90 million pounds of seafood valued at 86.4 million in 2013 in Rhode Island. Uh, annual retail import and export sales exceed $389 million and support over 9,550 jobs in Rhode Island. And so this really is an industry we need to keep supporting. Uh, in addition, around agriculture, we currently have over 1,200 farms uh, that employ about 2,500 workers in the state and have a total impact of about $2.5 billion in annual sales. And so these industries are vitally important, and as the Senate's been working uh, very hard over the last several years around how we can support job growth and moving our economy forward, uh, this resolution is really uh, asking our Commerce Department, our Department of Environmental Management, and Department of Labor and Training uh, to work together and develop job incentives. Uh, so similar to some of the other ones that we've created, uh, but specifically targeted to these industries so that we ensure that they continue to be a big uh, part of Rhode Island's economy and part of our growth strategy going forward. Thank you. Any questions for Senator Pearson? Comment? Senator Gallo. Senator, I'd like to commend you on this. I, I think this is a wonderful idea, and um, I recently was out dining, and we're doing a great job with the oysters, and I think yeah. that if we could expand our oysters... Uh, that would be wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, this absolutely. Would facilitate Senator. that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Any other questions, comments, expostulations? The only other person that signed up was uh, Joe Marcino from DEM, written only in support of. Motion by Senator Walaska for passage, second by Senator Jabor and Senator Cody. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? The ayes have it. Senator Chacon, a motion to adjourn. Senator by, second by Senator Cody and Senator Walaska. All those in favor? Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you very much, everybody, for attending the Commerce Committee. Oh.